How are you? I'm good. I'm good. How are you doing? Great. Are you joining us from Florida, I'm assuming? I am from Tampa, yes, from our spring training facility. As mentioned, uh, we talk a lot about uh, your, your, it's hard to believe, by the way, it was just over a year ago when you officially became part of the ownership group uh, for mm -hmm. Uh, do you feel like you're a seasoned veteran now after one year? <laughs> I, a little bit, actually. It's just so action-packed. The whole year is so action-packed, and you're just constantly on the go. There's always something happening, whether it's a race or, you know, a sponsor engagement or meetings or, or, or. So um, it was kind of – it's nonstop for nine months. Um, so it was definitely a very solid crash course. It, it, I definitely feel up to speed. Yeah. Do you – I mean – when I came over, I, you know, a long time uh, TV anchor in Indianapolis. And so when I joined IndyCar a couple of years, two and a half years ago or, or so, one of the things that really struck me is once you get into the race season, you, you kind of get into a rhythm and you, you, you kind of go along. But really, some of the toughest work happens during, I'm going to call it non racing season because there is no <laughs> off racing. Right. Uh, but uh, that's, that's really when you, you know, some of the hardest work gets done. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I mean, that's true of baseball as well. So it's, it's sort of a double whammy, um, a lot of work going on during the quote unquote off season or, you know, whatever you want to call it, but you're right. There's, there's no off switch. Um, so it, it's very hectic between baseball and racing and trying to kind of prepare for the next season and, and getting back into it. It's, it can be chaotic, but you know, you got to thrive in chaos. Off, right <laughs> to be in this business <laughs> exactly uh i do want to talk baseball here in a second but let's just kind of talk about uh year one you know moving on to uh, now year two with devlin and, and the 29 uh honda powered car for for andretti uh steinbrenner racing I, I think the times that i've talked to devlin here in year two he seems much more confident much he, he seems like a different guy almost and I, that's not to take away anything that he went through in his rookie season, but I can just tell he's he's more comfortable and ready to go here this year. Absolutely, um, a lot more confidence. I think it's difficult coming in for any rookie to, you know, a lot of the tracks that, that you've never had experience on, on and just the difference between an Indy Lights car and an Indy car in general um, is a lot to learn, it's a lot to grasp. So the rookie season is always difficult you know and um he's but he's feeling a lot more confident this year and he's ready to go and you know we had an unfortunate start to the season but onward and upward only good things yeah obviously it was a, kind of a tough start to the season but to me uh as a team uh andretti autosport andretti steiner steinbrenner autosport um I think there are a lot of good things happening there's a lot of momentum maybe they haven't showed yet in the results of st pete uh, but I just get a good vibe from the team as a whole here in 2023. Is that the case for you? Yeah, yeah for sure. Um, I think that there's a ton of potential just in Andretti as a whole. Um, obviously, it's Andretti, right? They're they're always competitive. They're always going to be competitive. Um, and it was just all. It's been a good match for us from the start to be with Andretti, and so we're hopeful. I think it's going to be a really good season for all four cars on on the field for them. And uh, it's good. To to get back to racing too this coming Sunday, uh, Texas Motor Speedway. I'm assuming you're going to be there, right? Unfortunately, I can't. This is the I know it's the only race that I can't be at, but I will be there in spirit. We have um, our our um, longest tenured um, partner on our car, Capstone, is running Andretti Hospitality with Turbine, and um, yeah. we're going to be carbon neutral all of the cars and the hos and hospitality. So all four cars for Andretti are going to be carbon neutral for this race and all sessions practice and qualifying as well, which is really exciting for them. So I will be there in spirit cheering them on and cheering Dev on and in his ear, I'm sure the little, whether I'm the devil or the angel, I'm not sure on his shoulder, but. <laughs> right. I do want to ask you about that. Uh, and, and correct me if I'm wrong. It's powered by uh, the G65 capstone green energy micro turbine generator this weekend. Uh, this is the team hospitality we're talking about at Texas Motor Speedway. It offsets the carbon output uh, of all four team cars and hospitality operations across the weekend. So can, can you tell us a little bit more about that initiative from the team? Yeah. 
I Capstone has, like I said, has been a partner with us for the six years that we've been in IndyCar. Um, and I think this is really exciting for them to kind of get to come in and use this platform to show what they can do. Um, like you said, that mouthful of, of a description <laughs> um, is, is really exciting for them. And, and so they're going to come in and they're going to power hospitality and it's it's gonna neutralize carbon neutralize um, all four of the cars on the track. Well, well, and as you well know, sustainability uh, is at the fore when it comes to IndyCar and the NTT IndyCar series. So programs like that uh, really play well into uh, what you know the the, the ship where we're steering it right now as well. So it's it's tremendous to see a capstone uh, a part of something like that. So um, all right. So for fans that don't know your background your father of course hank stein runner mm -hmm. art owner uh, uh former co-chair of the new york yankees so you grew up uh, around the baseball team and i can only imagine the countless stories you have uh, <laughs> of growing up around really one of the hallmark sports franchises not only in major league baseball uh, but around the world Definitely have stories. Um, it's, it, it's honestly awesome. I mean, I, I love the world of baseball. Um, you, it's not, it's different in the sense of IndyCar. Like I love how you can be in, in an IndyCar paddock and you're kind of in the forefront, right? Like it's not necessarily the same in that regard. But baseball as a whole, I mean, it's America's sport. It's one giant family. Every fan feels like they're a part of the team, which makes going to the Bronx and going to a game a whole lot of fun. Um, I think I didn't realize the magnitude of it as a kid. And the older you get, you start to realize the magnitude of it um, and just how important the Yankees as almost a culture are to a lot of people in this country. Um, so, you know, just blessed to be a part of it and yeah. to continue, continue it on, what our grandfather started. Well, and it's such a global brand, too. I mean, you know, I, I was watching a, a Premier League game uh, over the weekend, and they had a shot of fans in the crowd, and sitting in the crowd is a guy with a New York Yankees hat, you know? Mm -hmm. yeah, it's it's mm -hmm. global uh, um, brands that uh, really resonate with everyone. Yeah. yeah, it is. I mean, you see it everywhere, which is very, very cool, I think, a lot of times, even when people don't actually know what they're wearing on their head or what the symbol means, um, you see it everywhere. It's, you know, like a fashion statement or whatever you want to call it. Um, but yeah, it's, it's definitely a very, it's a very big brand that, it, that it's been built into and was even prior to, you know, our grandfather acquiring the team. So it's very cool. It's very cool to see. Uh, opening day tomorrow. It's, I'm sure it's a special time of year for you guys, right? Yes. Definitely. Maybe a little stressful, but special, exciting. Well, I mentioned, I mentioned your father, Hank, um, he, a huge IndyCar fan, a huge racing fan. Um, but I think, uh, you know, in the last 10 years or so, um, was really on board with IndyCar. And I had an opportunity to, to chat him up a little bit at a couple of races. I didn't realize he, he pretty much went to every race yeah. that he could, right? right? He did. Where, where did that passion come from? And maybe for fans that aren't aware of Hank's racing background, just describe uh, how he became you know, such a fan. Um, for him, it started with Jim Clark. He was a massive, massive Jim Clark fan. Um, and that kind of just sparked his love for the sport. And he just always followed it. Um, obviously, on my dad's side of the family, it's very baseball centric. But on my mom's side of the family, it was always very racing centric, um, whether it be IndyCar racing or horse racing. And so I think that really just kept my dad's love of it going, um, you know, being involved in it, getting to go to races, things like that. But he always, he was just a huge Jim Clark fan. And that's what sparked his, his love for IndyCar and for the sport. That, that's not, not a bad one to get you triggered for sure. <laughs> right. <laughs> the all time greats. Uh, yes. Former Indianapolis 500 champion as well. Correct me if I'm wrong. Are you still working as the co-president of the Yankees Tampa Foundation? Yes, and, and New York. And New York. Okay, so mm -hmm. tell us about what you do there. Well, it's kind of generic to say. Like I tell people, it sounds very generic, but but really, our goal is to just make the world a better place for kids. Um, 
whether that comes through the Boys and Girls Club or, you know, Feeding America. We have a wonderful chapter of Feeding America here in Tampa, Feeding Tampa Bay, um, as well as in Indianapolis through the George Ford Foundation. We've been working heavily with Gleaners, which is sort of an offset of Feeding America. Um, Salvation Army, Red Cross, Disaster Relief, just, you know, anything that we can do to contribute to making Tampa, the Bronx, and now Indianapolis a better place for kids to live. That's awesome work. It's got to be very gratifying, too, at the end of the day for you, isn't it? It is. It, it definitely is. It definitely makes a girl feel good. <laughs> but, yeah. Hey, all right. So speaking of uh, Women's History Month, we're, as we're wrapping up uh, our coverage on IndyCar.com and, and our social channels as well. Um, as you work in sports, uh, what is a month like this that honors uh, not only women in sports, but women in their history and their the journeys that they've uh, had for, for decades now, centuries? What, what does a month like this mean to you? A lot. I think it's really important to celebrate that. I think it's important to bring it to the forefront. Um, it never has been. You know, and that's, that's exactly what we're working towards is for it to be able to be in the forefront. Um, there are so many amazing women in sports, all over sports. There's amazing women in baseball. There's amazing women that are in the paddock and, you know, in the offices and on field and in the cars every race weekend. So it's, it's lovely. I love having, you know, who doesn't want their own month, right? We get our own month. Um, but, but yeah, it's important. It's important for it to be celebrated and for people to really take into account that, there's a lot of women in this industry, specifically women in all industries, but specifically in this industry, there's a lot more women than I think people realize. Well, it's, uh, I mean, here's the thing. It's one month of honoring, let's face it, every month. So, <laughs> right? Exactly. Exactly. You've got it right. Nail on the head. Hey, exactly. <laughs> uh, so tell us a little bit before we wrap things up here. Uh, and again, thanks for doing this. To, and, of course. Uh, as we tried to hook up with you earlier, but uh, tell us a little bit more about Steinbrenner Racing. Where, where do you see this team heading in the next uh, few years or growing or, uh, you know, not to get too far into the weeds, but uh, what, what's what's next? Have you thought about uh, that? Or I'm sure there's plans in, involved. Yeah, I mean, it's, listen, it's always a conversation, right, about where you see it going and, and where we want to go, where we feel like we'll best be. Um, for right now, we're just really focused on 2023 and Dev's feeling great and we're feeling great. And, you know, we have a wonderful partnership with Andretti. So very much just focused on this year and we'll see what 2024 brings. And the start of it basically was, was George and, and the friendship he had with Colton Herta uh, mm -hmm. back when Colton was racing in the Indy Next by Firestone series, correct? Yes. Yes, exactly. About that a little bit, how it started the team. Yeah. So um the Hurtas have been family friends for for many years our stepfather sean jones um co-owns brian herd autosport with brian they've been friends for 30 years so colton is a part of our family always has been um they all are the herda family and so george when colton was racing over in europe george was paying really close attention to it and he's like you know crap this this kid's good like he's really got something and so when Colton, it made sense for him to come back here and wanted to kind of get into IndyCar and racing back in America, it just sort of made sense. My dad was really heavily involved in the starting of that team as well. Um, th that team, this team, yeah. <laughs> um, but kind of the inception of it, very heavily involved. So the two of them and our stepdad and, you know, kind of was like a family affair. We came together and we're like, you know what, it makes sense. Let's do it. And, you know, the two of them just came in a blazing. Uh, I've been reading the comments as you've been talking. There's some, uh, something about do the Colton boogie. Do we, what is that exactly? The is Colton that, boogie? I don't know. It said something about do the Colton boogie. I didn't oh, know that I'm was gonna, a thing. I'm going to have to ask him what that is, but I'm sure it's not something anybody that, wants to see me attempt. That's an excellent point. Yeah. <laughs> but also just thinking about, you know, the the genesis of the team starting it and uh what was the old indy lights now called indy next by firestone and then to jump up to the ntd indycar series what kind of an adjustment was that for the team it's always a big adjustment i think that 
because of Michael and, you know, JF and Doug and the team over at Andretti, it was a much easier transition than it would have been otherwise um, because they're so seasoned and they've, you know, been doing this for so long and they're always competitive in the series and they really just, they have a very, very good program and a well-oiled machine. So it re the transition was much, much easier um, having kind of Michael as a mentor and somebody to help bring us through it, especially George, because he was spearheading it at the time. So, you know, not, not as difficult as it definitely could be in any other situation. Well, the thing about Michael is, is and I'm sure you guys found this out very early on, but if, if, you know, uh, finishing second for Michael is, is, isn't, isn't the goal here, you know, yeah. and if something needs to happen or if something needs to be changed or what he, he will make sure it's done because at the end of the day, uh, not only does he want to win championships in the NTT IndyCar series, but our offices are literally right across the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, mm -hmm. uh, get himself back in victory lane. It may, it may never have happened as a driver for him, and he was a hell of a race car driver, uh, but to, to see him celebrate his Indy 500 wins uh, in victory lane, that's, that's, that's pretty darn special as well. It is. It's definitely special. It's definitely special, and, you know, we just want that for him. Yeah. You know, he's been, he's been a wonderful partner to us, and I just love to see, love to see the, those Andretti cars in winner circle. Now we got to get an Andretti Steinbrenner car in, in. Exact. See, you're reading my mind. <laughs> we're we're very in sync here. <laughs> hey, uh, I just again want to thank you for doing this. Thank you for uh, as we for having me. Thank you to honor uh, Women's History Month, and uh, we were talking about who to have on, and uh, your name was brought up right off the top. So, well, let's get Julia. Can we get Julia doing this? So, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, enjoy your weekend. Thank you. You as uh, well. Go Yankee. <laughs> yes. Uh, uh, I hope Devlin has a great uh, race at Texas Motor Speedway, and I hope you guys uh, end up in victory lane this coming Sunday. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Yeah. Thanks, everybody. <laughs> Thank Bye. you. PPG 375 Sunday, noon Eastern, live on NBC and Peacock at the IndyCar Radio Network. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Have a great rest of your